Joe Biden may not be getting any questions about Tara Reid's allegations against him, but somebody finally asked him about Hunter Biden again. This was a local reporter out of CBS Miami. Let's take a listen to that. The administration has been critical of the way you were when you were vice president were dealing with with China. I guess I want to ask you, do you think that this is is going to, in fact, be a major issue? And are you vulnerable on this issue at all because of your son's business dealings in, in China? No, I don't believe so at all. My son's business dealings were not anything with everybody that he's talking about, not even remotely, number one. Nothing to do with me, number two. Uh, what? Nothing First of all, to do with him, didn't understand Sager. that. Um, <laughs> okay, let's review. Um, Hunter Biden went on Air Force Two to Beijing with Joe Biden. Um, 13 days later, a company that he sits on the board of and holds a large equity stake in took a billion dollar loan from the Chinese government. And he admits that he met his business partner on that trip in the Starium Hotel that Joe Biden was in. Joe Biden was also introduced to the man, but he claims he didn't talk about business and it was just a purely social meeting there. Now again, I don't know, but I mean, this is obviously an issue. It's going to be an issue, which is that a company which is held, Hunter Biden holds an equity stake in a company that's taken over a billion and a half dollars in loans from the Chinese government. That is an empirical fact. And actually Li Fang over at The Intercept has reported that that company also is invested in technology which the Chinese are using to suppress the Uyghur Muslim population in Xinjiang province. So it's, this is deeply, deeply swampy, unethical. And he just says, you know, first of all, Hunter's business dealings had nothing to do with, like, yeah. whatever right. is going on here. Even Hunter says a lot of things wouldn't happen for me if I didn't have the last name. He right. admits it. Yeah. Because it's so obvious. Yeah. I mean, it's so obvious. And that's yeah. the thing. It's like, we're not stupid. We yes. see what's going on here. And look, no one is saying necessarily that any of this was illegal. No, In fact, but that's the issue. That's ex- <laughs> that is the issue. Like that this is just like standard operating procedure here in Washington. And I truly believe that both the reporters and the politicians in this town don't get what the big deal is. Because they're like, yeah, that's the way things, right. that's like, of course. Of course there are, you know, scraps thrown out to this family member, this yeah. brother, this friend, this whatever, revolving door after you exit. Like, that's how this town works. Of course he did that. Remember when we interviewed Ted Lieu? Mm-hmm. He said people sit on boards. They earn salaries. No big deal, it's right? It's like, uh, you know what? Here's the thing. This, we're not, we're being consistent. I think it's gross when generals leave the Pentagon and then go join the board of like General Dynamics. Yeah. I think it's gross that Chelsea Clinton's son, or Ch- sorry, Chelsea Clinton sits on the board of uh, Expedia, an IAC group, which is run by somebody who's a longtime donor and friend of the Bill Clinton family in the Hunter Biden case. There's a lot of Republicans too that I can name that have gone through. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't even think of us how many, how many of them go on to serve as corporate board members or a senior leadership in Richard financial Burr with industry. Richard stock sales and all Richard of Burr that. Richard stock sales. And look, the president profiting off the presidency absolutely is disgusting. And here's mm. the problem is people always on the Democratic side, if you raise any of these issues, that's what they say is like, well, Trump is, this right. is like the standard refrain for everything. Trump is far worse. That may be the case, but the reality is Trump isn't running on his morality. Mm. He's not running on like, res- on this values restoration message. And so just from a political perspective, if you're Biden and you're trying to run essentially a moralizing campaign, which is what Hillary tried to do as well, and people looked at this and go like, you can't moralize here. You're like maybe a little bit better, but not really. We think that you're corrupt as well. And it's the same deal with Biden. If your whole thing is like restore the soul of America and you see the same sort of shady stuff that's always going on in this town, you're like, you're no different. You don't get to like morally preen about this stuff. And that's the real issue. And again, we people like us mm. tried to, I tried very hard to raise the alarms here saying, look, this may be uncomfortable and you may know Joe and he might be your friend and you may know his family. Like this may be uncomfortable. But if you ignore these issues, it is going to come back and bite you in the general election if you actually care about defeating Donald Trump, yeah. which many of the Democratic elites in this town don't really care about defeating Donald Trump. They mean they care about maintaining their own grip on power. And so all of this was considered completely off, like totally off limits. You weren't supposed to even mention it. You were supposed to, c- certainly not supposed to ask him a question about it. When Zephyr Teachout wrote a very factual article about the business dealing surrounding Joe Biden with mm-hmm. his family. Called him corrupt, which yeah, is true. And, and called yeah. him corrupt. 
David Sirota, mm -hmm. friend of the show, of course, includes it in his newsletter. And Bernie Sanders was outraged. He freaks out. He, he bans David from the campaign what, trail. Right. Yeah. He, he punished David for that. I mean, and who who does this hurt, ultimately? Who does this hurt? Biden. This hurts yeah. Democratic primary voters who actually want to beat Donald Trump. Because none of this, look, if they had all this information in front of them and they had a chance to evaluate it and see the way that it's going to be used and weaponized against him, and they still made that choice, fine. They right. made that choice. But they didn't have the luxury of having all of that vetted in the public sphere. Right. I mean, CNN and MSNBC have hidden this from their viewers. Go ask them if they even know, any of their viewers, if they know anything about Hunter Biden and his Chinese business dealings. I bet you they don't even know. They think it's probably just localized to Ukraine. And the Ukraine thing, that's all about impeachment. So whatever. Right. I mean, that's that's literally how they think about this. And look, like I've said here many times, Republican elites in 2016 did not want to win against Hillary Clinton. They would have much lo rather just lost because you can fundraise like hell in the opposition. Look right now, the ACLU, Human Rights Campaign, these people are printing money, saying stuff like, this is the worst president of our lifetime, help right. us fight back. They don't want to fight back. They don't actually want to be in power. It's all about the grift. It's all about the salary. It's about the nice, fancy buildings here really? in downtown Washington like, it with really cafeterias. Is. I mean, it yeah. re like we are really not exaggerating. No, come. Like, I'll, this is, I'll it's take about, you around. It is yeah. about the money. It is about the gig flow. It is about having access to those deals and like the corrupt cartel of the RNC and the DNC and their favored consult. I mean, that is what this town is really run for the benefit of. And you know, you see in an instance like this. I'll also say it's not an accident that it was a low local news reporter oh, yeah, who yeah. dared to ask him this right. question because this is a person this you know who doesn't have any expectation that he's going to get any consistent access or a CNN gig to the right. CNN gig or consistent access right. to the Biden camp or administration or whatever so he's not looking to looking to lick his boots he's looking to actually ask him questions exactly. that need to be asked. And so you see this consistently. Remember, we covered a tough interview that Elizabeth Warren faced yep. from a local news reporter. And it's such a contrast to the sort of fawning treatment that we see on MSNBC or on CNN of Biden. And well, it's, we can't ask him this. We yeah. When Rachel Maddow that. asked her, she's like, would you serve as vice president? She's like, yes. And she's like, oh, oh. <laughs> to catch it. She was like, thank you for uh, directly just answering a question. I'm like, yeah, that's what it was. Or Stephanie Rule, that clip we played yesterday, Stephanie Rule and Nancy Pelosi. Oh thank you so much, Nancy. It's so cringy. Oh, you're so amazing. Yeah. So All cringy. Right. Well. Good job. That gentleman did a thank nice you, job. Sir. Thank reporting. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, more rising for you after this.